up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, what's up, people, it's me, I'm L2070, no lie out. Thundercats are on the move, Thundercats are loose, honey. He's about the business of dipping spoons into sugar bowls. Anyway, real girls do real things. So as to make it easier for insertion, maybe? No means no, and yes means no. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, people? What's up, what's up, what's up? It is me, L Teddy 27, and I am back for yet another review. This, ladies and gentlemen, will be our review for. This is The Real Housewives of Potomac. It is season seven. It is episode 10. I don't know what the hell it's called. I don't even know that I care. It, it'll be somewhere around me. This was a filler episode, which I needed because the last couple weeks have worked. Y'all know has worked my nerves. So I needed this filler episode. I was grateful for it. We start off with Giselle and Robin. They're doing their podcast thing or whatever. Then they talk about um, they're gonna have the fact that they're gonna have a live uh, recording or taping of their podcast. They're gonna do a live show. And they have I forgot the I think her name was Carly, the the chick that was helping them. I think her name was Carly or whatever. She was helping them um, plan out the uh, live show. Robin. Um, talks about the fact that when the girl leaves, Robin talks about the fact that she ain't got her prenup done yet. She's not serious. Like, Robin, stop playing this game with us, please. We don't have this type of time. We really don't. Like, we literally don't have the bandwidth, broadband bandwidth, energy, what have you, to deal with you and your lies and your fallacies and fabrications about whatever nuptials you have dreamed up in your, in your head. We ain't got, we don't have it to do. Moving on. Robin then talks about the fact that her and Wendy tried to make nice with each other when they were at the club in Miami, drunk as hell. Um, and so she said she really wanted to find out what that was about. She then talks about how Candace and her needed to have a conversation after Candy blew, on, blew up on her after they left the club, that very same club in Miami that last night. So she needed to have a whole lot of conversations. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put this out there now. I guess we'll talk about it later in the episode, but... The whole thing is, Robin, you are a different person when Giselle is not there. We all know that. Like, girl, whatever. Candace is at home with Chris. She's planning to have a graduation party in her backyard. So they're talking about that. Candace invited Karen. Why? Why? Like, why are you continuing to try to play nice with people who don't play nicely? Like, why are you continuing to want to be friends with these raggedy ass hoes? Like, I don't understand it. Candace invited Robin as well. Why? Like, I've never seen somebody wanting so much to be friends with such raggedy ass people. Let me, let's be clear. If you don't like my ass, you best believe I can't stand your stinking ass either. I'm not out here begging to have friends like that. At no age, at no age was I out here clamoring and begging for friends. If you ain't want to be my friends, that's fine. I'll be, uh, listen, I can party by myself. I don't even need nobody to have a good time. I will be over here minding my own goddamn business, enjoying my own life without the confines of having to be around anybody. Girl, I can't do it. Karen has proved to you over and over and over again, she's going to go anywhere the wind blows. If some shit um, comes up with you, what is Karen going to do? She ain't going to, now, I'm not saying that you should be loyal to somebody to a fault, but Karen has showed you, baby, I don't have loyalty to anybody. I'm loyal to whoever is on the show. If they on the show, I'm here for them. If they ain't on the show, I don't care. Right, wrong, or anything in between. Those are not the kind of friends you want. Those are not the kind of friends you want. Robin is only loyal to Giselle. And we all know Giselle ain't shit. I told y'all, she's the least of us. They collected all of the worst parts of the human genome, put them together, and made that bitch. <sighs> She tells Chris that her period is late. I ain't care. Karen is at home with this white boy, Matt, or whatever, trying to plan a live show. Once again, Karen has never had an original idea in her life. Uh, when you come from a small-ass town, ain't nobody called, ain't nobody in this town um, shit, North Carolina or South Carolina, whatever, wherever state she's from. But I'm sure that's the name of the town. Ain't nobody that lives here um, shit. Um, North Carolina, then these things happen. You don't, you don't have an original idea at all. So whenever you hear somebody talking about doing something, then you magically want to do the whole, oh, why don't I do that? Because you ain't shit. That bitch ain't shit. 
I'm telling y'all, Karen ain't shit. So, she making all these plans with this white boy. I ain't seen not one of them write shit down. He done, you know, read off like um, 614 different ideas. Karen is over there all enamored ab about it. And ain't nobody writing shit down. Like, girl, I guess. I get. Y'all know I don't have it to do with Karen. And I... I She's doing anything she can to stay relevant on this show because she has no relevancy at all on this show anymore. Why are you here? You in the last few years of your life, Karen. Just get off my television screen. I I, I don't need to watch the geriatrics. We then see um, Wendy. She don't, she's uh, Her husband is picking her up from the airport. Um, she just got back from Chicago and she had a speaking engagement at the University of Chicago. And her husband is like, she keeps saying Chicago, Chicago. And her husband is like, why are you pronouncing it like that? Because even he knows he's listening to her like, bitch, where the fuck you got these alleged four degrees from that you can't even spell, I mean, can't even pronounce Chicago? I mean, let me guess, you um say Illinois too? Enunciating the S? Not knowing that it's silent, cause you give me that you just as slow like that. Like you give me that you know have no, no understanding of diction, enunciation, pronunciation, any of the sorts with these alleged four degrees. And I can go there there with you, girl, because I have degrees as well. You don't seem too intelligent to me, but whatever. You sound like a goddamn idiot. Four degrees, four degrees. That have you at a point where you can't even pronunciate common words that even three year olds know how to pronounce. Pronounce. Just a mess. Just a goddamn mess. She says she's going to have surgery to remove these kidney stones instead of passing them naturally. That's probably the best decision you done make. Because everybody who I know that um, passed kidney stone said they, they wanted to die. Said they just wanted to die. Um, the husband said, but baby, when you going to have time to plan out this um, surgery? Because you don't seem to have time for anything. And you need to prioritize your health. She ain't going to listen. She ain't going to listen. <sighs> Candace and Robin go out to talk and when they first start off robin is over here crying allegedly her um her hairstylist um had um death in the family um due to some tragic car um accident or something like that i'm going to give up this awesome opportunity to drag the person responsible for that train wreck that we see every season on robin dixon's head I'm just going to give up the opportunity to drag who, the woman responsible for that. And I'm going to be kind and say the woman is grieving. Well, technically, she ain't grieving now. You know, that was months ago. So since you ain't grieving now, I guess we can. Who the fuck? Like, there's a real person responsible for the shit that Robin be having on her head. There's a person who takes claim for that. Like, I'm sure the real tragedy is not the fact that someone died. The tragedy is the fact that you let that person's name, face, and likeness see the light of day on our television screens so we could really see who the fuck is really responsible for that bullshit you be having on your goddamn scalp. A mess. Just a goddamn mess. Just a damn mess. <sighs> anyway, I mean, it's like a whole science experiment up there going wrong like a Petri dish. You ever seen like, you ever did like a science experiment where you just leave the Petri dish out there and all types of nefarious bacteria and single cell celled organisms and all types of things that you just want no parts of starts to grow and cultivate in this Petri dish? That's what the fuck be going on in her goddamn head. Like, <sighs> Candace then starts crying because now she don't want full backpedal and pussy pop with this apologizing to Robin. Why the fuck are you apologizing to this bitch? Like, why? She doesn't like you for real. She really does not like you. She's not here for your best interest. She's not here to see you do well. She wants no parts of your betterment. And you are... Now, I wrote down in my notes. Because I knew... I mean, because if we're being honest, we know as soon as this bitch gets in front of Giselle again, she's going to be back to dragging Candace and doing everything she can to make Candace's life hell. Hell, her and Giselle, if we want to be honest, we're trying to get Candace off the show back in season five. It just so happened that the Monique situation happened and then they teamed up on Monique. But we know the real reason why you're being nice to Robin Dixon. You still trying to make that Delta line, Candace. 
Baby, we already know you want to be a Delta like uh like Mother Dorothy. And you know Robin is a Delta and Robin has connections with the alumni chapter that you want to be a part of. So you over there still being nice to Robin, thinking that you have an ice cube chance in hell of making that next Delta line down to the DC alumni chapter. Girl, get your life in order. That's the real tea. They ain't going to never tell y'all that on the show. Anyway, uh, Mia the Liar and Gordon Gartrell, uh, her husband, they go to some ribbon cut cutting for the new location of somebody's chiro chiropractic firm, just not theirs. Production asks her in her confessional all about, you know, what's going on with, what's really going on with y'all business dealings. Of course, this whore would have no parts of answering any real questions because she, listen, she'd rather lie than answer a question. And in keeping with that, Karen comes. Karen says, hey, where's your mama? Wouldn't your mom be here for a situation like this? Oh, well, and of course, rather than do her normal lie, she just said, oh, I don't really want to talk about that. Because she was getting ready to lie. She ain't shit. Moving on. Satana. Urgh, Ashley. She and um the Omen baby, one of the Omen babies, Damien Jr. He ha Damien 666. Devil child. Better known as Dylan. Went over to Uncle Lump's house. She tells him that her and Michael are at the point where now they're arguing and screaming at each other because Michael is saying, you need to do a better job at planning out when you want to go and just have events. We're going to have to get used to this whole co-parenting situation. So you need to do a better fucking job at letting me know, hey, this is what I have planned. This is what I plan to do with um, the boys or can I take the boys or can you take the boys? Because now y'all are getting ready to get divorced. And yes, bitch, you got to plan shit out. You can't just spare the moment and say, I'm just going to do this no more. Then this whore... Um, oh, before she, we started, before she started crying, she said that when they get into these shouting matches, the original Omen baby, Damien the first, uh, Dean, he, oh, Damien, six, 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 devil child, because these are Omen babies, starts literally screaming at them, telling them to stop. And what type of flawed ass parenting do you all have where y'all have to get into these big drawn out shouting matches? matches in front of your toddler children like that's just not a healthy environment for a child so much so you got this child probably screaming and crying or whatever breaking mirrors all over the house because you know when a demon seed or a satan spawn or a banshee screams all the mirrors and glass in the house breaks so i'm sure y'all have to replace a lot of mirrors but anyway why y'all doing this in front of your kids Satana then starts crying and Uncle Lump Lump and his wife starts to try to console her. Baby, don't nobody care about you and your tears, honey. No one cares about the tears of a clown when there's no one around. I don't care. I don't care. I'm, I'm going to have to raise these boys on my own. Did you forget you have Barnum and Bailey's favorite, the bearded lady? Urgh, your mama? To help with that. You got your uncle. You got your brother. You got your uncle. Girl, if you don't go sit your stinking ass the fuck down, sit your ass down somewhere, um, Satana. Because I will have no parts of all of this crying and bullshit. You knew what you was getting yourself into when you laid up with a geriatric that's 132 years old, damn near, to make his descent back down to the eighth or ninth level of hell where Beelzebub, urgh, Michael Darby ascended from. Go, go sit your ass down somewhere, um, Satan. I don't nobody give a shit about your tears. Candace goes and picks up Mother Dorothy from the airport. She tell her mama she might be late. Girl, I ain't care. We then see Giselle at the Sweet Sixteen party for her, um, uh, for her two daughters. You know the two, um, two, um, the two, um, of uh, two of her three kids. None of the three which like her or wants anything to do with her or wants to be around her. Don't y'all notice anytime you see them kids around their mama? Like, it just seems so awkward. Even when you were watching them at this week 16, you just could tell they were like, I really don't want to be around you, but I have to because you're my mama. Because even they could see she ain't shit ass. Like, ugh. Uh, just, Jamal comes. She only invites Ashley, Sharice, and Robin from the, um, from the, um, from the show. I mean, well, I don't know if that's all she invited, but that's all who came. Candace has the graduation party. 
Ray Ray and KK, Urgh. Gray Pubes and Uncle Ben, Urgh. Karen and Ray come to the graduation party. They rude asses just bust up in people's house, you know, without waiting to be let in. Who the fuck does that? I wish a bitch would just roll up in my house like that. Robin comes, um, then Sharice and her daughter come, and then Wendy and Eddie come. Um, we find out in the, one of the confessionals that the pregnancy test was negative, so we ain't got to worry about her. That being her storyline, at least not this season, God. Um, Karen asks Robin um, about the wedding. Uh, what's going on with this good wedding? Robin said, oh, it's only going to be the four of us there. You mean you, Juan, and the two boys? Like, really? If a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there to hear it, did it really happen? The pictures of this wedding, I'm sure, will be lost with the Loch Ness Monster, you know, with Sasquatch, you know. Like, what, what is... What are we doing? Why are we giving any credence, any airtime to this fallacy? You know, that Robin Dixon, the, you know, let fall out of her brain. She's never getting married. Never. And gay marriage has been legal for a very long time in D.C. But her, uh, him, and uh, Robin ain't getting married. I mean, him and uh, Juan ain't getting married. It ain't happening. Whatever. Wendy and Robin talk. Robin asks Wendy why was she willing to engage in good conversation when none of the other girls were around. And I was like, bitch, because when you're around fucking Giselle, you're a totally different person. You're a totally different person. Nobody wants to talk to you at that point. Like, you really, Robin, have to know that you're not the same person all the time. Like, you really have to know that. Wendy pissed me the fuck off because now this bitch is still apologizing to Robin, still trying to make nice with a bitch who was over here to fuck cheering on the fact that you were getting assaulted. This bitch was over here damn near doing somersaults and cartwheels and backflips and damn near had a whole party over there on the other side of the fucking table when you were fucking getting assaulted and didn't give a shit. She egged it on. She encouraged it. And you're apologizing to that bitch? For what? Fuck her. Him. Whoever. Wendy, you ain't shit. This is why I continue to question the validity of the accreditation of the schools that gave you these al alleged four degrees. Because if there are institutions of higher learning that are accredited in these yet to be United States of America and gave you four degrees and you are making decisions like this, Whatever. I mean, it's just stupid at this point. She And then, after she apologized, she's damn near begging this bitch for an apology back. Anytime you have to ask someone for an apology, whatever they're going to give you is not a real apology. It's something forced just to appease you, just to placate you, just to patronize you. And you're around here damn near begging. I thought the bitch was going to get on her hands and knees and stop going like this. Please apologize to me. What the fuck? This bitch was cheering when you were getting assaulted, but you want to. I can't do it. I can't. I, I, a bitch just can't. Hashtag ABC. A bitch can't. Candace apologizes to Karen because now we got her in full backpedal pussy pop. So she's apologizing to Karen because of what she said to Candace. I mean, to Ashley about Karen's. And her relationship. What the fuck are you apologizing to this bitch for? Fuck her and fuck her life. Because see, that's how. If you said it on screen, that meant you meant it. You meant it. If you don't like her, tell her ass. I don't like you. Yep, I show. Yep, I heard the rumors that you were cheating. Just like your mind spreading any other rumor you hear in this group. I don't mind doing the same thing. Because that's what the fuck we do on this show. We hear a rumor, then we tell everybody about it. So now all of a sudden it's a big problem because I heard the rumors that you and Ray Ray was over there, uh, that you was cheating on Ray Ray, and it's a problem with me spreading that. But Karen, you spread every other rumor that you've ever heard on this show. And we supposed to just look past that. Because you are untouchable. Nobody can spread your rumors, but you can spread everybody else's rumors. Bitch, you ain't shit, Karen. Fuck you. And you ain't shit Candace for apologizing to this geriatric, gray pubic haired having whore. Keeping up with geriatrics 
and they ain't shitness. Ray Ray, uh, Uncle Ben, decided that it was time for him to join in in the bitch assness and ain't shitness of geriatrics. Guess he had his Jared Hall before he came. So he goes up to Chris and they have a conversation about Giselle and this motherfucker says that Chris, well, you should just apologize to Giselle. For what? Because I was like, hey, if he apologizes to Giselle, to her, that's an admission of guilt and she will utilize that shit and let that shit grow wings and grow legs and just keep that shit going. For the rest of Chris's time on this show, he will always be labeled as somebody who's inappropriate with her, with Giselle or any other woman. Like, he will wear it like a scarlet letter. You never, you better not ever apologize to Giselle, Chris. Because if you apologize to that bitch, she's going to take that shit and run with it. Because now you fed into her lies. And you know what happens when you feed into people's lies. They take that shit and act like it's the truth. And the lie morphs into the truth somehow. Like, what the fuck kind of bizarro world is going on on this show? Like, what is this? <sighs> Chris got upset. Chris got angry. Chris was like, fuck this shit. They was in the house. Candace and all this good. Chris was like, fuck this shit. Chris went outside. I need something to drink. Because these bitches done ran my blood pressure up. And I'm not here for the fuck shit. Because I felt like Chris was really going to go in there and go the fuck in on Ray Ray and have him go into cardiac arrest. I'm glad you um, didn't, Chris. It kind of went off from there. Listen, y'all. I don't know what the fuck we're watching anymore. Like, this shit is just, 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 just off. Like, you got people apologizing to people. Like, I don't even understand what Bizarro was. Next, I'm sure, what's going to happen next week? We're going to have, because you don't already had Wendy try to apologize to Mia. And now Wendy's apologizing to Robert. Like, what the fuck is happening? Get me out of here, y'all. Listen, let's get in the comment section. Do what we do. Ah, good. Ah, good. About what y'all saw and what I saw. Y'all, I, I can't. I don't have to do. I don't have to do. That's all I got for y'all. Y'all know we'll be doing our panel on Tuesday, 8 o'clock, right here on my channel. Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Be there or be square. Um, me and Darren Green TV and some others. So y'all be here for the panel. Until next time, that's all I got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out. <laughs>